what's going on there guys? You've officially arrived at the 420 scene and today we're gonna to be talking about which flower is better indoors or outdoors and since I've grown both ways indoor and outdoors figured why not just make a video on such a controversial topic but first show us some love and support by watching the entire video dropping a like subscribing and tapping the post notification bell so you miss out on any future videos also be sure to join our VIP patreon program for tips monthly giveaways live streams all that good stuff link will be in the description below and also don't forget if you want to come and sesh with us check out our grows and just chill with us follow us on Instagram link to that will also be in a description below. So what makes indoor flower so different from outdoor flower? Maybe the sunlight as opposed to LEDs or HPS lights makes a difference. Maybe it's being in an outdoors free environment, you know, maybe that does something better for your plants than as if you were going to be growing inside, you know, maybe it's being inside in a controlled environment that makes it better to grow inside. There's like so many questions, so many different variables. And if you guys have been growing a long time, you'll know that your plant's environment is probably the most important thing next to the genetics, of course, genetics. Genetics overrules everything, all right? Growing indoors versus growing outdoors has such a huge impact, and a lot of people can tell whether they've been growing outdoors as opposed to growing indoors just simply by looking at the plants or even, you know, trying it out, trying them flowers out. Now, there are so many different variables to take into account that separate one from the other, and I'm not gonna be here to tell you indoor growing is better or even that outdoor growing is better. I'm here to kind of show you the differences between growing indoors and outdoors. And I've grown both ways, so I think both have their positives and their negatives. Now, first off, let's talk about how indoor and outdoor flowers compare against each other. Think about this one for a minute, all right? What's the first thing that you think about when you compare an indoor plant versus an outdoor plant? You know, everyone's thinking size, everyone's thinking yield, not dealing with lights, not fighting for space, but there's more stuff to look at, like the differences in you know sunlight exposure, microbial communities, temperature, all that stuff is gonna affect flavors, the colors, and the effects that you'll get from each of your plants. Let me know in the comments below whether you're an indoor gardener or an outdoor gardener, and also tell me why you prefer indoor or outdoors, depending on obviously, whichever one that you like more. I want the comment section to be blowing up high key. So let's talk about the differences in color because to me, the difference in color and presentation is probably the biggest dead giveaway when it comes to outdoor versus indoor growing. Now, as a rule of thumb, flowers that are grown outside has darker shades of green compared to ones grown inside, just my own personal opinion. That's not always the case though. It's not always the case, you know, I don't want anyone jumping on me for that, but you know, but it usually is the case. Okay, now I feel like indoor plants show more frost, more brighter colors, and they just look like they would have just better bag appeal. I mean, if you know, if that's your thing. I know some of you guys don't care about bag appeal, but some of us love to look at our flowers and just be like, wow, look at them colors though, right? Not gonna lie, I'm kinda like that. You know, when I look at the bag, I really wanna see those nice, vibrant colors, and I know it has nothing to do with the potency or anything, but it's just one of those things. You wanna be able to have that presentation. That's definitely key, that's definitely what sets the tone you know if one of you guys sent a picture on Instagram you know I sent a picture on Instagram I send it all trimmed up making it look super nice you know I like to present flowers of my own like say on Instagram the ones that I think are you know my favorite you know I really like looking at all the different colors and uh, I don't know it's just really fun that's that's only me though of course potency is absolutely important I don't want you guys thinking oh I'm all about the colors I'm all about the colors potency is really important and there's no doubt about it but you know presentation is just it's just really important also outdoor plants deal with wind sun beating down all summer long rainstorms everything else that nature decides to throw at us and our plants got to deal with all that crap so they kind of look a little rough around the edges now let's talk about the differences in size between indoor and outdoor plants now from my experiences I feel like my indoor flowers have they've just always been a lot tighter having more colors and more potency than outdoor flowers now in the summer of 2017 that's when I was like you know what, I'm gonna do some outdoor growing, I'm gonna do some outdoor growing, I'm super psyched about it. I grew some Blue Dream, I grew some Lemon Kush and Chem Dog, and you know, they're really good strains, don't get me wrong, but I felt like, God, I'm random fly in the room. I have no idea what that was all about. So as I was saying, I was growing the Blue Dream, the Lemon Kush, and the Chem Dog, and you know, they're really good strains, but don't get me wrong, and I felt like the potency of the indoor stuff was better, and I had to throw a lot of my flowers out because 
I did get some bud rot thanks to all the rain that we got like around August, September. So I mean, it totally sucked. I guess it really, it really depends on where you live. Maybe I should have grown in a greenhouse. It's tougher to grow outside. You know, it could be sunny and great one day, then you could have 50 miles an hour wind, you know, the next day, and, and then it could be sunny again, and then two days later you got more rain. And Mother Nature is super unpredictable. She does not really care about your plants. It, it, it is what it is, and I wholeheartedly feel like it definitely affects the quantity and the quality of your flowers. Because think about it, nature is doing their thing, messing up your plants, that's what mother nature loves to do best. All that accounts for stress, stress, stress. And it's going to lower the quality of your flowers. Now, I'm not saying that outdoor stuff, you know, I know Cali Grown Buds, you know, he's a really great outdoor grower. He's, he's always getting like 30 pounds or something, you know. Guys like him, you know, been doing it for a long time. As a general rule of thumb, I've always felt like indoor flowers don't go through the stress that like the outdoor flowers have and you know being able to control your environment is just it's just important being indoors having that steady environment that you're able to control you don't really have to deal with the rain unless your roof sucks and it leaks inside your house kind of like this one okay that is definitely one of the reasons why we're leaving here that's just one case i hope that's never a case for any of you guys if it is get the heck out of where you're living right but anyway as a general rule outdoor plants will grow bigger than indoor plants i mean you're your plants have way more space for your roots to thrive in. Even if you're growing in pots, you can always get bigger pots and it's not like inside where you gotta worry about space. And I feel like that's generally not a problem when you're growing outdoors. I felt that my outdoor plants get more quantity as a whole than growing inside, but the quality of indoor growing is just totally unmatched in my opinion. Indoor flowers, they just taste really amazing. It's stronger, the colors look better, they're denser. Again, guys, this is just my opinion. You know, I, I know all the outdoor growers are ready to jump on me, but that's just my own opinion. I'm not gonna lie. I, I could be maybe a little bit biased here. I have grown indoors a lot more than I've grown outdoors. Outdoors is fun though. It's just I've never been in a situation where I have the room to be able to grow outdoors. I haven't grown outdoors in over four years, but I can only go by my experiences from growing outdoors. And as far as the fun factor of growing goes, I definitely think growing outside is just, it's just a lot more fun. You know what I mean? There's something about being in nature, being in the soil, just working. It just, it's just something that's always felt great to me. Let's talk about the flavors growing indoors versus outdoors. And when it comes to the flavor or the terp profile, genetics, the plant's nutrition, and of course your growing experience plays a huge role in the outcome of how your flowers are gonna taste. Sunlight and microbes play a huge role too. That's something when I started growing, there was really no talk about microbial environment, you know, having, you know, feeding your soil. That was not really a thing. Everybody was just using liquid nutrients, a little bit of organic gardening that was starting to be kind of, believe it or not, that organic gardening was not really something a lot of people talked about when I was growing like in you know when I started 2014 I did all this research nobody was talking about microbes or anything but it definitely does play a huge role and also a lot of people go after UV lights because it's the best light to mimic the sun's rays I've even had a few of you guys talking about UV bulbs in the comment section which is why I'm bringing up the UVs now I think a few of you guys made some kind of comments about the UVs maybe like a few weeks ago or something and that's that's what kind of struck the idea to come out with this video now obviously if you're outside, you already have an unlimited access to these UV rays, they call it the sun. Indoor growers like using lights that give off UVA radiation because it encourages terpene production without the, you know, the harmful effects of the UVB exposure. I know, I know, when it comes to radiation, everybody just freaks out. Trust me, nobody likes radiation, not even if you're playing Fallout, okay? You guys ever see that episode of South Park where Stan's dad is trying to get his medical card so he figures if he gets testicular cancer from radiation, he would just get it? Yeah, don't do that. So we talked about sunlight, but what about microbial life? I did brush up on it a little bit earlier on in this video, but since I've been going all organic, I've learned a lot about how microbial life is important. And the general rule of thumb here is the more diversity of microbial life in well-established gardens will drive your terpene profiles super sky high, high key, all right? Now, if your pots or beds, whatever you're in, if they're getting lots of compost, mulch, organic matter, you know, compost teas, stuff like that. You're providing lots of beneficial microbial fungi and bacteria, and they contain a developed soil food web. I'm a big fan of mycorrhiza, okay? I use mycos literally.
literally in every single grow that I do. Before I do the transplant, I dig that hole. I just, I spread that Michaels all over the place and I mean the plants just absolutely love it. They explode in growth. Once they get out of the coconut husk starter pots and once the roots start to touch the Michaels and oh my God, that's when that explosion definitely happens. You know, like the mandarin cookies and the PFGs. I, I know we did have to chop that down because of the move that's happening when I, you know, but when I did transplant, if you saw how fast they exploded in growth, I gave them a ton of mycos. So when the roots would grow through the coconut husk starter pots, like I just said, they would get hit immediately with all that mycorrhizae bacteria. And, and I mean, they just took off from there. Now, as far as quality goes, you can grow really good flowers in most environments, indoor and outdoor, okay? Our plants are pretty resilient. Even when mother nature is involved in here, our plants are very resilient. It's all about genetics. It's all about growing environment, healthy soil and of course, some growing experience, you know what I'm saying? Those of you that have been following us on IG, and even we had our grow videos on here for YouTube like last year or the year before that, know that I didn't just start growing good flower off the bat. You know, we, we all we all start somewhere, Some you know, we're gonna have bad runs. It's just, it is what it is. It's not something that anybody should even judge anybody for. It's just, it's part of the process. I'm it's trouble part. hearing you. Well, dude, why are you listening, man? Yo, Siri's always messing up on me, bro. I'm telling you, literally every video has something to do with that, my watch, okay? Pretty much what I was just saying that, like, it took a lot of years of work and, and dedication to get good flour. I did have a whole bunch of bad runs, so if you have a bad run, don't worry about it. It happens, whether you're indoors or outdoors. You know, you learn as you go. My whole point that I'm trying to say is everybody starts somewhere. But I'm telling you, like, once I started, I, I just couldn't stop. I was just addicted to growth. Growing. I just love it and the motivation to always do better just made me want to keep doing another run and another run and another run and the excitement was always there from the start and we never stopped learning and you know that's what's great about this community is that we bounce ideas off each other back and forth we're pretty much just feeding off each other's passions and desires to grow and that's what I think is so great about our community all right guys so before I keep rambling on and on I think I'm gonna close off today's video but before I close off today's video I want to thank everyone on screen that's been supporting us on patreon since february i appreciate the love and support guys we got over 150 members on patreon right now like it's awesome it's crazy even think that we grew such an awesome community on there so definitely if you want to be part of our live stream if you want to be part of our giveaways you want my pro tips early access to videos definitely join us on patreon so i'm going to close off today's video be sure to drop a fat thumbs up drop that fat like and subscribe for more content and i will catch you guys in a next one and as always stay safe peace